Welcome to Fun with Annuities, where every single week I welcome a celebrity guest expert that can help you maximize chapter two of your life. Listen, learn, laugh, and love every minute of the most unique financial podcast on the planet. Let's get to it. Welcome to Fun with Annuities. I am your host, Stan the Annuity Man, America's Annuity Agent, licensed in all 50 states. So glad you joined us. I do not have a guest today. I'll start back with my guest after this episode, but I wanted to start this episode with the Annuity Man predictions for the year 2024. Should be an interesting year. I'm also going to do some political stuff, personal stuff, hopes and dreams for you and all that stuff. So I'm looking forward to it. So let's talk about annuities for a second. And, you know, just look back briefly at 2023. 2023 was a was a wild year because people found out that there are many types of annuities. They found out that multi-year guarantee annuities typically have a higher yield than CDs if your duration is longer than three years. So if it's three years and out, CDs CDs do not beat multi-year guarantee annuities. And multi-year guarantee annuities, those are the annuity industry's version of a CD. So everyone out there, including all the pundits, I hate all annuities. You know, <laughs> it's so uninformed that I think those voices have been squashed a little bit because a lot of people found out that they can protect the principal and get a very good guaranteed yield on um, on their money, and and just if they didn't need the interest, you know, they just tax deferred growth compounding. If they needed to peel off the interest, they could. So people found out that the pitch from a lot of the pundits out there that hate all annuities, never buy an annuity, all that stuff, that rang pretty hollow in 2023 because people found out that you can you know in addition to lifetime income stream products which you know there's four to five depending on how you're counting in the annuity world um you can protect the principal and get a guaranteed interest rate that's pretty darn good from really good companies so 2023 was somewhat of an awakening for the consumer looking at annuities through a different lens through a more educated lens. I'm going to take credit for a lot of that because I'm out here pounding the table, thousands of videos, seven books, this fun with annuities podcast that I bring on great guests. And I also do some free form um, commentary like I'm doing right now, which I think is very important because you need to know what's coming down the pike in 2024. I think so 2023, great year for the annuity industry. You know, hopefully they will learn that they don't have to be fancy, simple products sell. Simple products are attractive to people like multi-year guarantee annuities and immediate annuities and those type of products. But what is going to continue in 2024 is what I call the demographic tidal wave of baby boomers that hit age 65 every single day. Depending on who's counting, some people say it's 11,000, some people say it's 12,000, some people say it's 13,000 every single day hitting age 65. And the reason that that's important for the annuity industry is those people are looking for contractual guarantees. Those people do not want to put their money at risk. Those people are are wanting to do chapter two of their life and build the income floor. And that income floor is money hitting your bank account every single month. So you can go live your life and, and visit your family and kids and grandkids and travel the world and Reward yourself for decades and decades and decades of sacrifice, nod your head, so you can take care of yourself. Chapter two is about you, as I always say. Um, The annuity industry should benefit from that. I'm not sure how well they're doing with that, except for riding my coattails a little bit. And I'm not being egotistical about it, but I'm the only one out here talking about contractual guarantees. I am the only one out there out here that says don't buy the hypotheticals or the theoreticals. Own an annuity for what it will do, not what it might do. And on my site at theannuityman.com, 
you can run quotes to your heart's content using proprietary calculators, quoting all carriers, you know, depending on what you're looking to do. And I always ask two questions. What do you want the money to contractually do? And when do you want those contractual guarantees to start? I also use an acronym called PIL. P stands for principal protection. I stands for income for life. L stands for legacy. Other L stands for long-term care, confinement care. You don't need to solve for any of those four items in the pill. You do not need an annuity. Never buy an annuity for market growth. Now, I'm going to get some blowback on that, but I want you to hear me out. I'm going to cover those things. So the demographic tidal wave 2024 is going to continue. It's going to continue on um, because people want guarantees, and that's what annuities provide. They're contracts. Don't believe it. You're going to get a policy in the mail if you buy one, hopefully, from us. And that policy is a contract. So buy the contractual guarantees of the policy. The other thing, too, is there's many different types of annuities. When you strip it down to the contractual guarantees of the policy, in essence, you've commoditized that strategy, which means that you can shop all carriers for the highest contractual guarantee. My opinion, the annuity industry is going to triple in the next couple of years because more and more people are following my lead on contractual guarantees and understanding where annuities fit, and they should not be bought, bought for hypotheticals or theoreticals or what I call unicorns chasing butterflies, making fun of those agents and advisors that sell the dream, um, which is sad because you're going to get the contractual uh, guarantees of the policy. So let's go through each specific type of annuity and, and kind of my take for 2024. Let's group the three annuitized products, which is single premium immediate annuities, SPIAs, deferred income annuities, DIAs, Qualified Longevity Annuity Contracts, QLAX, they all derive from the SPIA structure, which is a no market attachment, no moving parts, no annual fee, transfer risk, pension type product uh, for lifetime income. Uh, there's really no, no ROI until you die. All of these products um, are very simplistic in nature. You can explain it to a nine-year-old, no offense to nine-year-olds. If Warren Buffett ever decided to buy annuities, the, he doesn't need them, then this would be the type because he he is a firm believer of understanding what you buy and keeping it simple. Now, single premium immediate annuities, deferred income annuities, and QLAX, lifetime income products are primarily based on your life expectancy or if it's joint life expectancies. Um, so it's it's really just that. They're looking at your life expectancy and they're grouping you with people your age or ages if it's joint and you're sharing and pulling in that risk, which is mortality credits. That's an explanation for that. So it's, you know, lifetime income is, is a combination of return of principal plus interest. Um, so, you know, on our site, if you run a, a non-qualified SPIA quote, you can see that interest portion that's being paid. But just remember, these are not investments. These are contracts. These are transfer risk contracts that are going to pay for as long as you're breathing when you buy them for lifetime income. My predictions for 2024 for these, they're going to become very, very popular as people keep driving towards simplicity with me leading the way and the Pied Piper of annuity simplicity saying that, you know, these are pension products. And in a pensionless world where less than 9% of companies provide pensions to their employers, um, you're going to have to create your own pension. And that's what immediate annuities, deferred income annuities and qualified longevity annuity contracts do. Um, interest rates play a secondary role in the pricing. We are gonna see fluctuations, obviously, in the interest rates. No one knows where they're gonna go, so please don't ask. You just quote all carries for the highest contractual guarantee, and if that guarantee fits your goal, then implement, lock it in, and go. You're not gonna be able to time it. There's no sweet spot. The bell doesn't ring at the top or the bottom. So I think SPIAs, DIAs, and QLAX will become ever more popular um, and grow I predicted a while back when 2014, when QLAX were first introduced by the Department of the Treasury and our friends at the IRS, they're the ones that came up with it, to use in IRAs, because Social Security, which is the best inflation annuity on the planet, was never put on the planet to be the sole retirement income source, even though, unfortunately, too many people use it for that. QLAX were put on the planet so that people can use qualified money, IRA-type money, to plan for future income starting at a future date, and they can add their spouse using their IRA assets. It's a great product, and I predict down the road, and I'm a little off on my timing, I think it's going to be the number one selling annuity type on the planet uh, just because there's so much IRA money out there. I think once people are educated on that they can use their IRA money for um, 
lifetime income for both them and their significant other, they're going to lean toward that. And you can structure so any unused money upon your death goes to the beneficiaries. It's a transfer of risk. And the money used in the QLAC is not counted toward your required minimum distribution calculation. So you can potentially save on some taxes. That's a very good combination, in my opinion. And the reason that I predict it, eventually QLACs will be the the leader of the band here um, from the standpoint of the industry. The only reason it's not is the commissions are low and um, I don't know, the agents just have, haven't bought into it, but I love that product. I was the first one to write a book on QLACs a long time ago. And I've written a book on every single annuity type and you can get those books. Um, I think that my, my PR team yells at me because I say download it. I don't know what all that means. In other words, you can get, go to my site at theannuityman.com and get them for free. Uh, we used to mail them out hard copy, but it got so wild and there were so many copies being sent out like thousands and thousands a week that it just became, we became a shipping company and that's not what we are. We're the number one uh, independent agent in the country. That would be me and a great team that's primarily based in Las Vegas, Nevada. I'm, I'm doing this video from our, from our Florida office, which is a smaller office, but Las Vegas is kind of where the hub is. Uh, so I run in between Vegas and Florida. So SPSDs and QLEX, I think they're going to grow in popularity because people want pension type income because we live in a pensionless world. Um, let's go over a couple of principal protection products. I think multi-year guarantee annuities, which are the annuity industry version of a CD, um, those were the go-go product and the hot product in 2023. I think they're going to continue even though rates are coming down a little bit. People are figuring out that in addition to CDs, money markets, treasuries, they can add one more product to that principal protection category, and that's multi-year guarantee annuities. And the difference between that and a CD is CDs and a non-qualified account, you have to pay taxes on the interest every single year, whereas with multi-year guarantee annuities and a non-qualified non-IRA account, that, that um, growth is tax deferred. Doesn't make it better, but it is, it is a way to protect the principal and not worry about taxes. You know, and you can buy it IRA, Roth IRA, non-IRA, but again, the rule with my goes is you know, three years and in, or less than three years, I would look at CDs. More than three years, I would look at MIGAs just because you're trying to maximize the yield, the contractual guarantee yield. I think the MIGAs, and MIGAs, even though interest rates could be fluctuating a little bit in 2024, I still think they're going to be very, very popular with people looking for principal protection and very, very simplistic guarantees. That's a great product. Index annuities, fixed index annuities were... were we use them for as a as a simplistic delivery system for income riders. We'll talk about income riders in a second. But index annuities will continue to be very, very popular. Number one, they are one of the higher commission products out there that make them good or bad. It just is what it is. It is a good story when it's when it's hyped a little bit. You know, um, the unfortunate story that uh, is attached to too many index annuity proposals is market upside with no downside. The word market or stock market should never, ever be used with index annuities because it's not a security. It's a fixed annuity that's regulated at the state level. It's a life insurance product. And it was put on the planet in 1995 um, to compete with CDs, which it really has, it just historically does. Um, we use it again as an efficient and cost-effective delivery system for income rider guarantees for future income needs when you wouldn't need to start a future date for lifetime income. But I think the index annuity space is going to continue to grow because that's where the industry gets paid. I mean, just to be very, very honest with you, that's where a lot of the money, the commissions, the overrides, the soft money, that's where that lies. And because of that, that's where the, the marketing organizations are going to push their agents to sell. There's, there's things like upfront bonuses that are missold as free money um, to the uneducated masses, unfortunately, that are retiring um, the market upside with no downside sales pitch is misleading, but it's a fun one to say if you're going to say it out there as a salesperson, because it sounds like you can have your cake and eat it too. You cannot, but the index annuity space is going to continue to grow. The income writer space, an income writer is not an annuity. It's income writer is a attachment typically to an index annuity or variable annuity for future income. We asked two questions. What do you want the money to contractually do? when you want those contractual guarantees to start. If you say lifetime income and you need it to start in the future, we're going to quote all income writers for the highest contractual guarantee. And historically, up until this point, index annuities with income writers, those income writers um, offer a higher contractual guarantee historically than variable annuity income writers. 
nothing against those income riders and nothing against variable annuities. We just don't sell anything that has a potential to go down. And, and most variable annuities um, have a annual fee in that two to 4% range annually. And we just feel that's a lot. Um, but you know, the income rider space is going to grow um, exponentially just because of the demographic tidal wave of baby boomers retiring or people planning on retirement. And they're looking for income at a future date. And the good news about income riders is you can change the start date. It's what I call full control lifetime income. It's not annuitization. It's called drawdown. Drawdown in, in Southern means subtraction, meaning you know your income from any of these lifetime income products is a combination of return of principal plus interest. But with annuitization, think of Diaz, Spias, Diaz, and Culax. You're ripping the knob off a water faucet and the water's flowing. In this case, it's income. With income riders, you can st start and stop it like a light switch, turn it on and off, you know, you don't have to do that, but it's available to you. And people say, well, why would I ever do that? Well, let's just say we'll get to the political stuff later, but let's just say someone comes up and says, okay, all you rich people that own income riders, that income rider is going to be taxed at, taxed at 90%. And we just typically, we'll just, we'll just go in and shut it off until someone rational gets in office and, and, you know, takes that off the table. So income riders are going to grow like crazy. I do think that there's going to be a lot of innovation uh, in the annuity industry, you know, with, with so many baby boomers, 10 to 13,000 retiring every single, you know, hitting every age 65, every single day, you know, capitalistic companies want to get in front of that money flow. They want to get in front of all of that. And they're going to come up with products that are good. A lot of these products that I'm talking about now are what I call legacy products. There's not been a lot of innovation in the annuity industry. Uh, but I think that's getting ready to change. I think uh, with so many people looking for guarantees, you're going to see some good things happen. It's going to be pro-consumer. All I would tell you to do is shop all carriers. Don't believe the sales pitch. Believe the contractual guarantees. Now, a couple of products that we don't sell, um, variable annuities, which I have nothing against. Um, they just have a high annual fee. Um, if you're going to buy a variable annuity, I would look at a no-load variable annuity. Um, you know, they were put on the planet. Variable annuities were put on the planet in 1954 by TIAA. Back then, it was called TIA CREF, C R E F, um, as a way to grow your uh, money tax deferred. And up until a few years ago, there was one um, no-load variable annuity that we would point people to. We didn't sell it because it was a a no load, you could buy it yourself and manage it yourself. It had four to 500 really good mutual funds. And we just said, hey, go do it if you want to do it. But uh, <laughs> that company was purchased by another company and that product was ruined by the company that purchased it. We're not going to pull it, put, put up the names because, you know, it is what it is. But uh, no load variable annuity is fine. But if you, you know, in my opinion, if you want to buy mutual funds, go buy mutual funds. You don't have to wrap it in a wrapper if you don't want to, or you don't have to and pay the 3% annual fee. Um, then the, the newest one is a, is a what's called a RILA, registered index link annuity. Very complicated. Um, you know, if you want to talk to us about it, you can, but we do not sell those products. Um, some people call them buffer annuities. Those are going to become very, very popular because it takes a what they call in the business series six type license, security type license to sell it. Um, so those broker types, and having, you know, I used to work at Dean Wooder, Payne Weber, Morgan Stanley, UBS, I get it. Um, they will be selling the heck out of Rylas for the commission and the fact that it's a pretty interesting story, but complicated, very, very complicated. Um, and I hope that that space, that Rila space gets more simplistic. So if it does, we'll look at it. But again, we only look at contractual guarantees and Rylas are all about hypotheticals and theoreticals and backtested, et cetera. The other annuity that I would probably encourage you to look at, and it's not something we sell, is is a charitable gift annuity, CGAs. And if you have a favorite nonprofit university, um, 501c3 that you give to, they probably have a division that offers um, charitable gift annuities. And there's some great tax benefits if you want to get a lifetime income stream yet. And also at the same time, donate to a, to a charity. Um, I've worked with a lot of colleges on that, helping them promote their charitable gift annuities. Um, a lot of 501c3s, I help them, you know, with that because they're annuities, they're lifetime income streams. All I can tell you is that just make sure that the underlying 501c3 charity, nonprofit, good old state you, whoever you're giving the money to, they can back up the claim because that's, you're giving them money and that's in essence, um, you know, who's going to be providing the payment, but it's a highly regulated 
area. It's not the wild, wild west. I would encourage you if you have philanthropic tendencies to go in that direction. So those are kind of the products. And I do think there'll be new products out there. I mean, people like Wade Fallon, Moshe Molesky, who've been on my fun with annuities podcast, Michael Finca, those type of David Blanchett, those type of thought leaders, they're always pushing the envelope to see if the annuity industry can come up with a better product for the consumer. And like I said, I do think there will be those innovations coming. Um, and obviously, we're going to represent those companies. All those companies will want the annuity man to represent them and tell the truth about that product. So we look forward to that. Um, at, so the annuity industry it's going to grow whether they want it or not. If they follow my lead, it'll triple. If they don't, it'll probably double. Um, if they follow my lead, it'll probably triple or quadruple. But And my lead would be contractual guarantees only with that message going to all of the retirees and people looking for guarantees. As for the annuity man, um, you know, I'm just, I'm blown away by our growth. I'm very proud of what we built. Um, we have a great team. I have a great management team. I've, I'm surrounded by great consultants and great minds. Um, I'm kind of the visionary of this whole thing. Uh, some of you have been with me from the start. You saw me speaking at shows and traveling traveling in my car a long time ago. I had a little hybrid car that I you know, put 275,000 miles on and I flew all over. Um, but the annuity man is going to grow. Um, we are hiring all the time. We are growing. Um, we are the leader in the direct-to-consumer model. <clears throat> I hope that the annuity industry keeps going in the direct to consumer model. Um, everything that we do is for the, the possibility in the future of uh, people being able to buy annuities truly direct. Um, right now, you have to have a licensed um, agent or person that's passed the, the test on the phone with you. Every single person in my in my building has a has passed the test or they're not in my building, so they're licensed. So, you know, but eventually... I think we're going more and more to a direct consumer model like an E-Trade and like, um, you know, like those platforms. I'll give you a great story. When I was at Dean Water a long, long time ago, and this is before E-Trade or any of the online platforms where you could do $8 trade. Now it's, you don't have to pay. But back then it was like when E-Trade and those people came out, it was like $8 a trade. I remember when I was with Dean Water. One of the Grand Poobah leaders from New York flew in to talk to some of the some of us people that were the the bigger producers and said, "Hey, um, we really don't think these you know this online stuff is going to be a threat to us. You know, people still want advice." And I'm thinking to myself, that doesn't make any sense to me. There's no reason someone is going to call me and buy a stock or sell a stock and me charge them, you know, hundred to four hundred dollars commission, which is kind of what that old school stuff was back in the day, transactional stuff when they can buy for $8 and kind of got in an argument with that person. And I just thought right then, I said, this business model, and <laughs> they don't get it. And of course we know what happened now, you know, trading stocks as a commodity, you know, back, you know, there's no more of that, you know, transactional hundred to $400 commission to sell a stock. If you're a stockbroker, et cetera, there, there are no more, you know, quote unquote stockbrokers. I had the same eerie feeling and, and um, predictions for the annuity industry. Everyone tells me, no, 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 Stan, this can't happen, there's no, there's no way. And my visionary approach to life, which is simplicity, I'm thinking, no, I think, I think it's going to. And one of the reasons that the annuity man continues to grow is every decision we make is for the consumer. I know that sounds sappy and made up, but it's really not. We're, we're really trying to put ourselves in your shoes. If you're out there running, using our calculators, how, would, how do we think you should you would want to see it. And, and we do something different, unique. If you haven't run it on their site, go there and you'll see it. Um, it the, the videos, when I decided to do videos and we're thousands in now and I keep doing them, I did that not to, not to sell, even though we do sell more than anyone, but, but it's to educate. There's never a time ever on my thousands of videos that I've mentioned a specific product or a specific carrier or a specific thing that I would like for you to buy. It's not some bad chicken dinner seminar on a video. I'm literally trying to educate you to see for you to understand how these work and if they make sense for you, and you're going to make that decision on your terms and your time frame. That business model for the annuity man is going to continue. And the other thing, which is the ba most basic part of the annuity man, and I know this is going to sound sappy as well, but by now, if you watch some of my videos, you know I'm not playing around. Our whole thing is just to tell the truth. My grandfather, Hunter Garrison, told me a long time ago, if you tell the truth, you don't have to remember anything, Stan. Duh. 
That's it. We'll tell the truth and we won't bluff. If we don't know the answer, we'll go find it. But we're not going to bluff you. And it's really that simple. That's our, you know, that's that's our mantra. Now, the will do not might do is the contractual guarantees. We strip it down to the contractual guarantees so that we turn all of these products into commodities so that we can go shop using our calculators for the highest contractual guarantee for your specific situation. There is no best product. There's no best type. There's no best one. There's no best carrier. The best one is the highest contractual guarantee number for your specific situation. Yes, we do look at the carrier strength, et cetera. But if you strip it down that simply, when you're looking at annuities, new all annuity types, this is easy. The only thing complicated that I found about the annuity industry is the annuity industry itself and how they try to get agents and advisors to sell their product or their specific offering. These are contracts. You base your decision on the contractual guarantee. So the annuity man, shoot, I mean, we're going to be here for a long, long time. You know, if my Learjet hits the mountain, there's plans in place for continuation. Uh, these these videos are going to continue to grow and grow and grow. And I, you know, I keep do, doing them and coming up with ideas primarily from you when we talk to you and you give us the ideas to come up with the videos. Someone actually gave us this is have Stan give us predictions for for on fun with annuities. I'm like, okay, I'll do that because I had some guests lineups like, hey, let's put this off. Let me do this real quick. So let's get to the um, you know, that's the annuity industry. The annuity industry is simple. These are contracts. You know, we use the two questions, we use the pill acronym. Uh, we we use our ears and mouth in proportion when we talk with you so that, you know, we're not afraid to tell you you don't need an annuity. We're not afraid to tell you that you've bought too many already. And the annuity industry, by the way, suggests strongly that you do not use more than 50% of your investable assets in annuities. Okay, can we push a little bit farther, maybe get you to 60? Maybe, if there's a good reason, we 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 take that bullet. But that does not include your house, car, or guitar. That, you know, you got to be very careful when agents um, fill out applications because they're putting down net worth as house and land. No, no, no. The annuity industry is looking at your investable assets. So if you have a million dollar house and a million dollars in, um, in you know, stocks and bonds and mutual funds, you know, that doesn't mean that you can put a million dollars in annuity. That means you can put half a million dollars in annuities. That doesn't mean you have to, but that's the way to look at it. It's investable assets. So just be careful out there. The, I think one of the issues the annuity industry has to address eventually is just the qualification standards and the education standards for people that sell annuities. Because right now, in my opinion, the bar is pretty low. And But that's coming from me, coming from a securities background where those tests are really hard to pass. You, you have to know your stuff uh, with you know the fixed index or the, the fixed side, especially in the fixed index world. You know, that falls under the fixed side. You just have to pass a state exam, you know, and I and typically get a 70 on it or 80 on it. Um, and I'm not sure that is a high enough bar, but maybe it is. Um, and maybe with these videos, uh, we can educate the consumers so that they don't fall for sales pitches and they don't fall for the too good to be true, you know, bad chicken dinner, expensive steak dinner st stuff. So uh, I can predict that we're never going to do a food seminar. <laughs> I know that's never going to happen. Um but we're going to continue to do videos. We're going to continue to listen to you. I'm going to continue to write um, and travel and figure out what the consumer really needs and be a spokesperson for the annuity industry. I am America's annuity agent. I have made myself that because no one else took the mantra. I'm taking the mantra. And so I'm going to set the stage out here and set the bar on how these products should be sold and from the consumer, how they should be considered when thinking about purchasing. So let's talk about some fun stuff. Um, presidential election. Let's get there. I'm not, um, you know, I'm not either left or right. I'm, I'm not even sure I'm center. I'm just, I'm just watching. <laughs> um, one thing I can predict is a really, looks like a really old person's going to win in 2024. Nothing against really old people, but I'm just going to tell you right now, um, when I'm 75 and above, you don't want me running the annuity, man. <laughs> I tell you, you just don't, I won't be hitting in all cylinders. I hope in the future that we can get some uh, some clarity around that and get some younger people in there that um, that can run things, et cetera. But as you know, with this country, we're a strong country and you know we're going to survive. We're going to be fine. Um, I'm not a gloom and doomer. I'm a glass half full person. So 
uh, you know, the election year is going to be interesting. And typically in the election years, historically, annuities have not have just kind of stayed the course. I don't see a lot of changes in the annuity industry during the election year. I think after that, there could be some, but I don't think you're going to see a lot of things happening in the annuity industry. So lock lock in those guarantees. I think the the guarantees that are out there are are favorable and fair. And you know, so many people that are retiring and looking for guarantees, the industry is clamoring to attract your money contractually. And so they're going to do the best they can to offer the contractual guarantees, making sure they can back those up. And that's the reason you got to shop all carriers for the highest contractual guarantee, because, you know, some, some of those tranches get filled up with age ranges and then the other companies come in and you can go to those other companies and it keeps, it's a, it's a nice consumer cycle, but politically, you know, it's going to be, it's going to be messy this year, as we know. Um, and I don't, you know, one of the things about contractual guarantees is those are not affected like market products. And that's the reason I think that kind of your move to that contractual guaranteed space will be a good one, especially the, in these volatile world events that we're living in. On a personal note, I just want to I don't know. Uh, for me, um, you guys know that I'm just I'm full out 100 miles an hour. I'm hoping to, um, you know, focus on the health, focus on the family. You know, my my daughters are growing older. Want to hang out with them, get to know them and their their significant others better. You know, my wife of 35 years, Miss Christine, is fantastic, and um, you want to spend more time with her. Um, I have a great team in place. I mean, I'm in it daily, but. You know, I just need to get healthier, you know, um, from all those days playing college sports. I'm limping around a little bit, trying to get healthy, trying to get my life in order and trying to be, I told my wife, my present to her is to be present and to, you know, just be a better, better father, a better husband, a better person, a better friend, a better um, agent, a better advisor, a better owner um, to my team and just be appreciative for what we have. I think that um, on my soapbox a little bit, I really wish the, the country would appreciate the blessings that we have. And, and I think that's important. It's always easy to be in a negative mode um, and, and get our emotions in the way of reality. And I hope, you know, we can all kind of be better at that. Nod your head. You're probably in the same place. If you're in chapter two of your life in retirement, I want you to maximize the day. I want you to start structuring your day for fun and for relaxation and for reflection and for, you know, meditation, whatever that means to you, quiet time with your thoughts, um, taking care of yourself. Life is fleeting. We all know that. We all have friends. We're all at the age where people are passing away and it just shocks the heck out of us. Um, if, you know, we get wake up, wake up calls all the time. Um, but at the older I get, the more I appreciate everything. You know, good and bad, everything. Not life's not perfect, as we know. Um, my wishes for you as uh, is to not be afraid to call us, not be afraid to interact with us. We're not a hammer looking for a nail. My organization, we literally are listening to you. Um, none of my people are on some type of commission bonus structure, or whatever. You know, we we uh, they're salaried, and you know they're good people, and they're they're trying to help. Um, you know, and really, we just we we love being the, I guess, the anti venom to all the bad sales practices that are out there in the annuity industry, which we hope to clean up by leading the way instead of complaining about it. And I do a lot, and sometimes, you know, my consultants and and uh, management team gets on me because I am railing because I, I get mad when people are taken advantage of. But I think this year we're going to just focus on trying to be the leader of the industry, which we are, and try to set the stage and the tone for the fact that these are great contractual guaranteed products. And if placed correctly, they work fantastic in your portfolio. Um, on a closing note, and I'll leave you with this, I want you to consider something that I'm trying to do is, is turn off the television. Um, I'm, I'm not watching sports and I'm not watching, I'm not saying you do this, I'm just telling you what I'm doing. I'm not watching political commentary or sports or listening to any of that. Because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. I mean, it really doesn't. I, I think you need to focus on your health and your family. Um, and, and part of the focusing on your family is setting these contractual guarantees up so that, you know, when, when you pass, that they're taken care of. We love to help you with that type of continuation planning. But kind of look at your day and look at your habits and look at the things that you can 
work on and try to eliminate and the things that could be addictive. You know, for me, I was, you know, always watching sports because that's how I grew up with my father and my mother, both coaches. You know, that's how you grew up. I'm I'm going on to chapter two of my life without that. Um, I think I've seen every play. It's all good. Uh, maybe I'll watch a national championship game, but I just missed the last one. I didn't watch it at all. I was watching a movie. Really enjoyed the movie. But, um, you know, let's let's kind of void ourselves of politics and void ourselves of sports and those things and, and spend quality time. I always tell people, think of the dumbest person you know or have ever met in your life. And that person's vote just nullified yours. <laughs> so, you know, when we talk about politics, you know, I, I encourage everyone to vote. But, you know, life and death is not politics. And yes, things those people do affect us, but that's not that's not what drives the train every day. So, you know, 2024 is going to be a great year for you. It's going to be a great year for me. It's going to be a great year for the annuity man. And it's going to be a great year for the annuity industry. Um, whether they whether they go in my direction or not, it will. Hopefully they'll just keep going in my direction with contractual guarantees. I encourage you to go to my site, get my books, run quotes using our calculators, book a call, watch the videos, read the blogs, um, tune into these podcasts. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I've got a great lineup of guests that's coming in this year that's looking forward to sharing their insights, and that'll be fun. Uh, and it's called Fun with Annuities. I remember when we first came up with that, the, the, you know, it was a great idea. I'm like, yeah, let's just call it Fun with Annuities because nobody in the world thinks annuities are fun, but actually they are. Uh, the way that we look at them, contractual guarantees, and we do have fun with them because I'm kind of a glass half full guy. My name is Stan, the annuity man. I'm getting older. Yes, you're seeing some gray hair. I know. And no, I'm not going to color it unless it's like red or something. Uh, I'm still going to be, you know, the walking middle finger of annuity truth out here. Someone called me that a long time ago. And I embrace that. I am going to be brutally factual. So is my team, but we're going to take care of you and we're going to do what's right every single time. Thanks again for joining Fun with Annuities. Let's have a great 2024 together. See you on the next Fun with Annuities with Stan, the Annuity Man. Take care.